to do, reach people who may enjoy this form of worship. And you folks are going to be on the spot. They are going to play Bind Us Together, Lord. This was my theme for the parish of New Ross, because it's such a one to join the churches together. And it's the same with New Germany. All three churches, Bind Us Together, Lord, Bind Us Together. Yeah. 
Our opening prayer that we will pray together. Holy and infinite God, you are closer to us than we are to ourselves, yet beyond our furthest imagination. Remind us of your presence as we walk the ways of daily life. And draw us beyond ourselves into adoration and praise of you. Through Jesus, our beloved Son, our Father, and our Savior. Amen. I read this song, Psalm 25, GPS for the soul, and I forgot to put on the end of it, the gentleman that had wrote this. So it, I'm hoping you can see it, and, and we will say it together. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God in you I trust. Do not let me be disgraced. Do not let my enemies float over me. No one is disgraced who waits for you but only those who are treacherous without cause. Make known to me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me by your humility. And teach me, for you are my Savior. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your compassion and your mercy. O Lord, for all they are paid to soul. Remember no more the sins of my youth. Remember me according to your mercy, because of your goodness, Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble in righteousness and teaches the humble of his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth for those who honor his covenant and decrees. For the sake of your name, Lord, turn my guilt, the way that is great. Who is the one who fears the Lord? You show him the way he should choose. He will abide in prosperity, and his descendants will inherit the land. The counsel of the Lord belongs to those who fear him, and his covenant instructs him. My eyes are ever upon the Lord who frees my feet from a snare. Look upon me, have pity on me, for I am alone and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart. Bring me life of my sister. Look upon my affliction and suffering. Take away all my sins. See how many are my enemies. See how fiercely they hate me. Preserve my soul and rescue me. Do not let me be disgraced, for in you I see refuge. Let integrity and our righteousness preserve me. I wait to you, O Lord. We will now have another tune uh, by a string and a prayer, and they are going to play People of Power. Yeah. 
Because all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're going, I don't know. I don't know if I could have handled this as well as Mary did. I don't know if I could have. But maybe we would have come around too if we trust. But we also don't know how long she prayed about the whole situation before she told anybody. Good girl, pray. How often do we pray in difficult situations? Do we forget to pray? Do we honestly forget to pray? Or do we really take it to the Lord in prayer? And try to pass it over. Or do we still hang on to it? Not here, anything. What if we do? I think we do, we pray more when we need help. And when things are going good, we forget. Ah. Sometimes we wait until we get everything else we possibly can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So see, we do everything else before we take it to the Lord in prayer. Not always, but sometimes. Yeah, you're right. You know, um, and I'm going to ask you something. Do you sometimes holler at God because you say it's not fair? Yep. Good. Good. Thank you. Because we have that right. He's got big shoulders. 
okay? So I just wanted, didn't know if you did it before we start on to our next segment. And I had a couple who were very gracious and said, because we're not going to have the gospel reading, it's going to be done in the form of a skit. And we, I'll ask Heather and Bruce if they will come forward, please. Miriam, it's me. You're a little late. Late? It's a wonder I made it home at all. Why, what happened? Oh, those boys. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, slow down and relax, and now tell me all about it. Relax? I can't relax. Oh, those boys. What? Now, what did they do? Do? They're gone. What do you mean, gone? Gone! They're gone! They're gone? Well, they'll be back. They won't be back. They are gone. Gone! What are you talking about? I don't know. You try to bring up your boys right, and they turn into fanatics. Well, you know, they do take after you. Me? A fanatic? Well, to other people, you probably seem like a fanatic. Me? Me? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you do go to the synagogue every day. As all good people of the covenant should. But how many do? Not enough. <laughs> That's for sure. Not as many as should. Where else can you... Read God's precious word. Nowhere else. You, you can't know the word of God unless you go to the synagogue to hear it. You see what I mean? Others would probably think that you are a fanatic. Because I love God? Everybody should be such fanatics. Maybe, but you can't expect your sons to be any different. Sure, they love God the Word of God, but that's different. For goodness sake, Seb, what did James and John do? I already told you, they left. They're gone. Where did they go? Well, what happened? We were spreading out the net from the good catch we had last night. Oh, good, good. You caught a lot of fish. Yes, we caught a good catch. We were just putting the net out and spreading it when along came Jesus. Jesus? Yes, you know the one we've heard so much about, the one from Nazareth. Oh, sure, the boys have been talking about him. Well, Jesus comes along and says something to the boys. They drop their nets, and away they go. They follow him. You're joking. Joking? I wish I was joking. No, they just drop their nets and follow him. Oh, my goodness. I saw what happened, and I jumped out of the boat and ran after him to, to try to tell him to come back and go to work. And did they finish their work? No, they didn't. Oh. That's why I'm late. Well, they just left, left me there to, and to do the, the work. I can't believe it. You had to lay the nets out by yourself? I sure did. I can't believe that they would just walk away and leave their old father to do all the work. Well, where the, will they live, and what will they eat? How will we eat is a better question. <laughs> the ungrateful young... Oh, neither one of them had a cloak with them. How will they keep warm when the evening gets chilly? Let them freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I, imagine it, I imagine it took two extra hours for me to get the nets out. Two extra hours. What was it Jesus said to them? He said, 
Follow me, and I'll make you become fishers of men. Fishers of men? What does that mean? I don't know. I don't make sense. Of, it doesn't make sense to me. Fishers <coughs> of men. <sighs> I spent a, my whole life teaching them to be fishers of fish. Fishers of men. Fishers of men. Will you stop that? <laughs> fishers of men. Yes, fishers of men. Why, why would some, anyone fish for men? Fishers of men. Maybe Jesus wants them to ask people to follow him as he asked them to do, like fishing for fish, but for men. What in the world am I going to do tomorrow? Where am I going to find two men as good as James and John? They walked off. All Jesus had to do was ask them to follow them, and they, they did. What a crazy world. <laughs> Is anybody... What, if everybody left work and followed Jesus, who would do the work? What would happen to the world? Who does he think he is? The Messiah? Yeah. Who does he think he is? The Messiah? The, the Messiah. Messiah. What if he is the Messiah? What do you mean? What if he is the Messiah? Should you should see him. He's just a carpenter. <laughs> Just a carpenter, not a messiah. Well, what should the messiah look like? I don't know, but not like this guy. <laughs> fishers of men. Stop saying fishes of men. The messiah wouldn't say fishes of men. Men would just men wouldn't just get up and leave their father to do all the work. The Messiah would ask people to wouldn't ask people to leave their work. Fishers of men. Fishers of men. Will you please stop that? Fishers of men. Stop it. <laughs> All right. Fishers of men. Hmm. What if he is the Messiah? I guess the Messiah could do anything he wants. If he wants to teach my boys to be fishers of men, he couldn't have picked two better boys. Oh, yeah, they're great. I trained them well, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> he knew the best when he saw them. Well, what will you do tomorrow uh, about the fishing? The fishing? Eh. Don't worry so much about, about that. The fishing will take care of itself. The fish will always be there, won't they? The Lord will see to that. It's important that my sons have been chosen to, to learn from the Messiah. My sons. Wow. Yes, but what happens if he isn't the Messiah? What do you mean? Of course he's the Messiah. Who, who else would make men leave their work and follow him? What are you saying? Fishing for fish. I can, tra I can train anyone to do that job. But fishing for men, the Messiah could train men to do that job. Fishing for men. Hmm. If I was younger, I could do that job. I could fish for. I I could fish for some men. Mm -hmm. I'd show them. I'd bring a whole bunch of men. Boy, if I was younger. So that's based on Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, 14 to 20.
when the men were called to follow Jesus. So what did you think about that? Is it realistic that they would just up and go? Just like that. There was a very interesting line in the skit when uh, the mother said, oh, that's the guy they've been talking about. So it wasn't just the first day they'd run across him. Um, they have been hearing about this and here was their opportunity to go with them. So what do you think might have been about Jesus? Like Catherine said, probably heard about him. Talked to small communities, right? And it travels real. So what do you think was in Jesus that they would follow? Charisma. Charisma. What else? Trust. Pardon me? Trust. Trust. What else? Huh? Life giving. Life giving. They saw something in him that, that was more than what they had had so far in their life was. Yeah. So I'm going to throw you a curveball. Is that what happens today when people follow a leader of a cult? Well, somehow, what? That, Go ahead. somehow that leader speaks to that person, resonates with that person, they see something in that person, and there's a connection. There's a connection. So there was a real connection. <laughs> those guys but to leave their family could you do it it's happened many times okay it's happened many times what do you think about mom and dad they came around awfully fast <laughs> <laughs> There's only a three minutes, kid. Yeah, they're not all every bad, eh? <laughs> right. But what did you think about what Dad had said? If I was only younger. That's a powerful line, is it not? What does that say to us, the church, as we all know we're getting older? But what does that line say to us? Thank you. Age doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. So they were called. What does called mean? It says, come and follow me. So what does the call mean to you? Something is stirred inside of you. you think we ignore it? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. What kind of struggles might you have had when you had that inkling, that feeling, that whatever? What struggles might you have gone through? You can't do it. You can't do it. Let's find somebody else. Yeah. If you're asked to leave New Germany and head up to Toronto, bad place to ask you to go this time. Self-isolate when you back. What? Have to self-isolate when you come back. But you're asked to go away from here and you've lived here for 40 years. It's probably an adventure. Adventure? It's an unknown, isn't it? I can look at Claire. Claire, how many places have you been? Lots. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gordon. Mary? The place. Audrey. Audrey. So there you go. If we look at you, you packed up and went. You had no idea. Is that not what the boys were going to be facing? What other name could you say instead of a call? What what else do we say? Vocation. Vocation. Yeah. So what other vocations are? So 
let's first of all, I'm going to back up a little bit and talk about a call. Are clergy the only ones that are called? No. No. Thank you. There are many people that are looking for a call. So they're looking for something to belong. They need to belong. They need to belong. Okay. Are we good at making people belong? are looking for meaning as well. You know, meaningful, uh, you know, a meaningful life, a meaningful vocational, meaningful things to do. do. Yeah. So what other vocations, if it's not ministry in the church, what other vocations are there that are very, very meaningful? Well, really all jobs are meaningful. I don't think it's fair to pick up nursing or medicine or So they can be such a witness wherever they go if they're following Jesus, right? What did we say? It's all action more than the words at times that people know. What does it mean that Jesus is good news? Answer me on that one. What does it mean that Jesus is good news? Oh, you're a quiet option this week. What, dear? We're not, we have to be quiet. <laughs> we, we might say he's the bearer of good news, but he is at the same time the good news. Isn't it? Good news of God. And what makes us say that? For us who have journeyed, what makes us say he's the good news? What would help you if somebody said, he's not good news? What would you say? He's better than the guy who's giving me bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Integrity? A death to who he is? Somehow when he speaks, there might be that you just get this feeling that he's sincere. You could maybe even, the love would ooze out of him. All those things that you look at somebody, haven't you walked away from somebody and say, they're genuine. Mm -hmm. They're genuine. I think that would be Jesus. He's genuine. And so there's something in that you would look at, I would think, and say, ooh, I gotta follow him. But my other question is, if Jesus was over there right now, long hair, he wouldn't have sandals on today because of the winter. You think we would follow him? He did get to know a little bit, I think. It's probably, like you say, the brothers had probably heard about him, had seen him in action. So before they could make up their mind, they would follow. And we would probably be the same way, wouldn't we? You won't met someone that you immediately have it at all comfort, even though they haven't really said anything. You can just get that feeling without them opening their mouths. Thank you. You're right. Because I've met people, you're right, and you just like back away. You know. And then there's other people you swear you've known them for years. So it's probably the same way with Jesus. There's going to be something in his birth. They just knew he was good. But there was something else in the story that may or may may not have caught. Because who did Jesus call? James and John. James and John. But what was their profession? <laughs> and what was that? What kind of profession? I gotta be careful when I say it that way. Provider of food. Pardon me? Provider, Provider of food. But ordinary people. 
probably had no big education. They might have been financially okay. You know, they were fishermen, but depending. My dad was a fisherman, so sometimes it was good, sometimes it was bad. Okay. Um, but when Jesus looked at them immediately, he knew that they were people he needed to get with. Thank you. Because didn't his dad say, I brought him up well? I brought him up well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He so saw he, the best in them. For me? He saw, he saw the best in them. He yeah. saw what they could become. Yeah. He saw their potential and. Uh, and he might have known, even before he, before he saw them, he might have known where he was going to, to get James and John to fall. Well, I think that's the old thing we got to remember, ordinary people. What did Moses have? Speech impediment. Speech impediment. And yet he was called. Okay. We all may have something that we think, oh, mine is, I couldn't break up a word if I tried. I can't break up words. And yet I have to stand up before you said every Sunday. And I have to read. I cannot. I, I don't hear the sounds. I don't hear the break. I have to be listening to the dictionary at home. We all probably, if we look, all have something that you say, there is no way that I can take, do this, do that, whatever. Ordinary people. And remember, being ordinary, all of us, doesn't matter. We all betray them to a degree at times. We all step back. Is there anything I may have forgotten to ask you? Thank you, by the way, for doing the skit. It's just a different way of bringing it out for you. A different way of hearing it and looking at a family who is going to be upset because they left. There's consequences in everything we do and for them, but yet there was a pride when they really stopped and thought about it. So may the Lord bless you as you think about this scripture and the others who are called. <coughs> called. And when somebody is called to do whatever, whether it's to lead Bible study, whether it's to lead the music group, or whether it's to be in ministry, or whether it's to have, have help in the cafe, there's a purpose. There's a purpose in that in which you're asked to help. Did you, anything else you want to bring up? And did you notice I had phones let us talk? Mm. <laughs> the reactions are interesting because if, if we do take seriously the call to follow Christ, follow God, you get similar reactions from family or friends. I mean, there are people who are excited and pleased that you're doing that. There's other people who think you're kind of crazy or fanatical or whatever, so very sure. normal reaction. Well, I'll give you an example as my mom. When I left Nova Scotia to go to Newfoundland, the seminary, every time I talked to my mom, are you sure about this? Are you sure about this? Yes, mom. It's not something what I want to do, but I got no choice in the matter. That's the other thing. I have no choice in the matter. I knew this is what I was supposed to do, so thank you. You know, because you do have that. And that was my own family. You know, because it was always asking. Thank you. At this time now, we will have the prayers of the people. In our prayers today, we put all thoughts and worries and hopes into the hands of God. You may like to hold your own hands in front of you as we pray. We place into the hands of God 
the life of this church, the people around us, and those who are not here today. We place into the hands of God our difficulties and frustrations, and our hopes and our worries about the future. We place into the hands of God the life of the church in all the world, all the people in the world who bring God's love to others, all people who are in danger because they share the love of God. Loving God, as you have blessed us, make us a blessing into your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We place into the hands of God a world that needs peace, a world that needs wisdom, a world that needs healing. We place into the hands of God the leaders of every nation, the poor of our own and every land, those who live in fear and all who hold the lives of others in their hands. Loving God, you have poured such love into your world. Show us how to help make it more a more loving place. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. We place into the hands of God our families, our friends, and our neighbors, those who live and work in our village, in our shops and local businesses, those who work from home, those who are unemployed, and all who pass through the village on their, in their vehicle. We place into the hands of God all those we know who are suffering. And we name them today, either out loud or just to ourselves. Tryson. Loving God, bless them with your love and comfort and healing, and show us how to care for them. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. And we place into the hands of God all those who have passed on, as we name them, Marion, Most merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'll ask a string in a prayer to play, All to Jesus, I Surrender, which goes along very well uh, with the scripture reading of Come and Follow Me, as they surrender to go with Jesus.
Tomorrow is uh, St. John's Congregational AGM meeting, mm -hmm. and that will be at 11 o'clock. And is that here at the hall? Yes. At the hall here. Next Sunday, we will be here at 10 a.m. Uh, with a special cafe church. Uh, and apparently, they're going to say thank you to me for the small journeys that I've been with you. So thank you for that. So come and join us again uh, next Sunday at 10 a.m. And then Sunday the 7th, we're going to be at St. John's at 10 a.m. And on the 14th, we'll be at Transfiguration at 10 a.m. And the week of February the 15th, Father Melanie returns from her maternity leave. And I say farewell. Uh, please, it's been a beautiful journey, but we'll talk more about that next week. Uh, all your annual reports are to be into Roger as soon as possible because your annual meeting is going to be September the 21st, following the worship at 10 a.m. September? How about so February? February, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to time to report. Go ahead. <laughs> so don't forget your reports, have them into Rogers so that you can have your annual meeting uh, following worship here at the hall. Bible study. Don't forget Bible study. Those uh, who haven't joined, I probably cannot speak enough about the Bible study that we have on Tuesday mornings from 9.30 till 11. 11.15. Can I say something about that? Yes, you may. You know how you're always inviting people. And I thought, well, I should invite people too, eh? What do you think? So the other day I sent an email off to this person who indicated she might like to come to something like that. And I got this reply back. Catherine, thank you for your invitation. I would love to join the Bible study group on an upcoming Tuesday. Looking at my calendar, February 9th would be good. Just send a Zoom link when convenient. I look forward to being with you then. Blessings, Linda, Archbishop and Primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. <laughs> we'll be joining us for Bible study on the 9th of February. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. So there you go. I sent the email 7 o'clock in the evening and not by 9, 10 o'clock in the morning it was back with the reply. <laughs> so well, there you go. I there like you that. go. Beautiful time. If you haven't joined, it good, good discussions. Uh, sometimes we're all over the map, but we do have a beautiful discussions. Then, of course, Christian Foundation on Wednesday nights at 6.30. And this is all by way of Zoom. Uh, our Christian Foundation, it takes us right back to our basics. And we have been going back to basics, and it's been really, really good. And then, of course, your community cafe Thursday mornings from 9 to 11. Is there anything I might have forgotten? So there's going to be a prayer that I want to pray. Now, you tell us if you can put your instruments on your lap, and hopefully they won't fall uh, type of thing. And I forgot to bring my speaker because I'm going to be playing something that I'm going to ask our group to play again. So let us pray. I would like you to place one hand on your heart and place the other hand softly with care on your forehead. Think of the Holy One extending love to you, desiring the greatest peace and ease for your well-being. Open your mind and heart as fully as you can and let yourself receive this kindness. Now bring your hands back to a resting posture. Sit quietly for a moment and allow yourselves to rest in this graciousness. Be immersed in the comforting one's presence.
doesn't look like this is going to work. I had trouble with this before. I apologize. What this was, was what a friend we have in Jesus to the tune of the rose. It's a beautiful, I wish I had a, uh, I thought it was going to work. But, no. I'm not quite sure what I did wrong. I will then ask our band to play. Oh. to the Lord in prayer. I think that's one of the things we have to remember the most. When those times are that great 
when those times are hard, I think we have to remember, take it to the Lord in prayer. I know we all forget, we try to do it on our own, but there is what a friend we have in Jesus. Ties in with the boys going off. They just trusted him. They left. They went. That's for you and I to trust and walk and journey with God. I will now ask a string in a prayer. Another one that will tie in. Father, I place into your hands.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.